Howdy folks, on today's episode of Monday Maps, I'm going to show you a cool way to visualize distances on your GeoLayers maps. Now if you have GeoLayers and you want to check out these project files, they're available over on my Patreon page, link in the video description. And if you don't have GeoLayers and you just want to learn more about it, I have an affiliate link down in the video description as well. Go follow that and you can find out more. Big shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Samir Mahdi, Joseph Culligan, Mike and Sandra over at YouTube, at Flumi Plus One, and Josh. Thanks again, folks, for making this video possible. Okay, I'm here inside of Adobe After Effects. I have the GeoLayers extension opened. I'm gonna click on Create New Map Comp, and I've navigated here to Paris, more specifically the Eiffel Tower. So the map that I wanna create here is, I wanna show or I wanna visualize walking distances and the time it takes to walk to specific monuments from the Eiffel Tower. And I thought this was a cool visualization because most tourists, when they come to Paris, their first stop is the Eiffel Tower. And once they're done there, um, it's really cool to just walk across the city and explore other monuments. And you can walk to the Louvre, you can walk to the Arc de Triomphe, there's a ton of places you can walk. So I want to show specifically how long it's going to take to, if you decide to go by foot, and check out all these monuments. This specific look was inspired by an app called City Mapper. So this is an app that I used a lot when I was living in big cities like I lived in London and Paris. And one feature that was my favorite that I used all the time were these ellipses that showed you distances like how far you could walk in 10 minutes. And I used it all the time specifically in London when I was trying to find like a tube station. This was really helpful. So when I was on the phone with someone I could tell them, you know, I could quickly calculate that distance. A so five minute walk here, can get in the tube station and then go blah blah blah. So I'll call the comp walking distances from the Eiffel Tower. Click next and I'll go with the basic map Tyler imagery here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hold control and click finalize and that's going to download that high res imagery just for this specific frame. Now there's this really cool park right across from the Eiffel Tower, right across the river. So here's the Eiffel Tower and here's this beautiful park. There's actually a metro station over here. A lot of people pop out of that metro station. Let's make that our central point where we're gonna measure out those distances from. So first I need a reference for the distances on my map and I can find that right here under this little button It says run script file. So when I click on this, there's actually a scale bar right here. Don't click on map scale, I'm gonna be using scale bar. So if you click on this, you can select what part of the, what part of the screen you want it to be on. I'm gonna select center and it's actually quite small. So I'm gonna zoom in here so now I've got this cool uh, horizontal bar with the text here, and it's very customizable. It's really easy to customize. So I can go take the text, I can scale it up. I'm just going to scale it up for the purposes of, the, of this tutorial, so you can see the, the you can see this easily on screen here. And now we have this shape layer. If you go to Effect Controls, you'll see you have some cool controls here. You can control the size, and then you can set that to fixed size, and you can actually change it over to Imperial. Don't do that. So you have both the horizontal and the vertical size. So as I increase this on the x-axis, check it out, our, you know, our measurement is reflecting that. So if I switch this over to fixed size, it's gonna give us a very, very specific measurements. So I'm gonna be doing my measurements in increments of 500 meters or half of a kilometer. So what I'm going to do is I want to expand this out to actually one kilometer. So I'll expand it right there. Okay, so 1,000 meters, one kilometer. Now for this size parameter, these are actually pixel values. So now that I know that one kilometer at this specific zoom level is actually 691 pixels. We need to keep that in mind. So now I'm gonna go grab the ellipse tool. I'm gonna set the stroke to like a black color. I'm gonna turn the fill off and now I'm gonna hold the shift key and simply double click on the ellipse. That's gonna give me this ellipse, new shape layer. So for the specific workflow that I'm gonna be using here, I'm going to do everything on one simple shape layer. And these are gonna be like shape groups. So all the different circles here, I'm gonna have different measurements, but those will all be shape groups in one shape layer. And the reason I wanna do it that way is so I can stylize them all uniformly, very quickly with one simple stroke group. So I'll call this layer walking distance overlay. So now I have an ellipse and you can see there's a fill, a stroke, and an ellipse path. So I'm gonna grab both the fill and the stroke and I'm gonna take them out of the shape group and I'm gonna make sure that they're below the ellipse because that's the way the render order works in shape layers. Everything below, or things at the bottom are applied to things on top. So if I bring that up top, it's not gonna be affecting this ellipse path. Now if you open up the ellipse path, you actually have a size and these are pixels. So all I really need to do here is go back to my scale bar 
And right here, we have 691 pixels. So we know 691 pixels is equal to one kilometer. So if I go and change this one to 691, and now I know that the diameter is exactly one kilometer. However, we're gonna be measuring distances from the center. So essentially what this measurement is showing us is 500 meters. So I'm gonna change the name of the ellipse or the shape group, I'm gonna hit enter, and I'm gonna just type in 500 meters. And it's really important that I don't zoom the map right now, otherwise all of these measurements are gonna go out of whack. Now I'm just gonna go place my circle right over here so that the anchor point is directly over what I want it to be. So let's do it like right over the center of this little park here. Okay, so now I know that if I'm walking right from here, it's 500 meters to the middle of the bridge. Now I can real quickly duplicate this and keep doubling the amount to give me different uh, measurements. So I'm gonna grab the shape group, I'm gonna double it, and I'm gonna quickly name it 1K. So we're gonna do one kilometer. And that's as easy as going to the size here and selecting it and then just multiplying it by two. And I do that by asterisk two. Voila, now I've got the one kilometer measurement and you can keep doing this. So I like to do it in increments of 500. So what I can do here is duplicate the 500 again. And now I can say 1.5K, go to size, multiply it by three. Now we've got one and a half kilometers. And then you can, you know, I can grab the 1K now and we can make a 2K. And you can just keep, keep repeating this to get whatever you want. So now I go to the size, multiply it by two. And now, as I said, if you wanna stylize this, I have the stroke beneath all of these. So all I have to do is if I wanna add some dashes and some gaps, I can do that here. And it's really fast and they're all pretty uniform. And now it's starting to look very city mapperish. You could keep your scale bar if you want. I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility of that off. And now I'll do a simple Google search. How long does it take? What is the average walking time for one kilometer? So it's 10 to 12 minutes. Let's round that to 10. Now we can add some labels. I'm gonna go click here. These are the label defaults and I'm gonna actually download some label templates and I have these icon presets here. So I'm gonna download the icons and now those will populate up here. I have some shoe prints here and now I can manually place these and maybe I could place them. I'll place them right in the center here. So let's say we are right here, right in the middle. Go ahead and add that label and that will animate on automatically. And now with the average walking time, I know that this is a five minute walk here. This is a 10 minute walk, 15 minute walk, 20 minute walk. Okay, and now I wanna add some text elements. So I'm gonna grab my text tool and kind of randomly put some labels here. First we'll do five minutes. And what I'm gonna do to like kind of stylize these is I'll add a quick white stroke. So I've got a stroke here and I'll set that to a width of maybe eight. So now we can see a little bit better. Okay, that's looking good. Now I'll simply duplicate these and create these labels for each little ellipse here. Now, one of the most important steps is I have to connect everything up, connect the overlays to the maps and have the text follow the overlays. So first we'll go to the walking distance overlay and I'm gonna parent this to the actual anchor, the map anchor right over here. And it's important that I set it to 3D and I wanna set this to a 3D layer so that it'll actually move with the map anytime I do like pitch moves or bearing moves. And I'm actually gonna grab all the text elements and I'm gonna try parenting those to the walking distance overlay, set those to 3D. And the reason I wanna do this is because I'm gonna do a little animation here for this overlay. I want the walking distance overlay to have a scale animation in and I want those text elements to stick to all of those ellipses, ellipses. So I'll pull up scale and it's already changing the scale. The scale is already adjusting to the parent, the map anchor. Okay, so now this will kind of shoot on. All right, so let's just change the, um, the graph here to have it, you know, be a little more dynamic and shorten this as well. And now I could just do some stylization options. So for the actual map comp here, I could add a hue and saturation effect and then just bring the saturation way down because that, that green is a little too strong for me. So we can bring it down, really make it a little bit more muted. And then I could even go to the walking distance overlay and I could add some layer styles. So I could add like another stroke on top and this stroke is going to wrap around the individual things here and it's already set to white and a good width. So it's a width of a size of three in white. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The real test here is to simply change the um, pitch and the bearing of the map and see if everything follows along accordingly. And we'll figure out right away if we need to make any changes. 
And I didn't really mention it here, but for the label, I switched this label to 3D and then I turned on rotate with map. Otherwise, if you don't do that, this is what it's gonna look like. It'll just kind of sit up straight, which maybe that's the look you want. For example, these layers here, um, if you have some labels, maybe you want your, your actual text labels to look more 3D so that they're popping off the map. That could be a cool look. There's a ton of ways that you can make this really cool. And you can even add expressions so that every time you duplicate a shape group, it will automatically offset it by like, it'll automatically double it or add the, you know, 600 whatever pixels, 400 whatever pixels we had. Okay, so there you have it. That is how you can create some cool walking distance overlays for your maps and geo layers. You can use this technique on a bunch of different projects. I think this particular method would be perfect if you're doing like the blast radius of like a nuclear bomb, um, showing like different, different types of bombs that have different power and you're showing the blast radius. This would be a perfect visual for that. Okay, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. If you wanna see more map videos, go check out Monday Maps. And if you're a hardcore map fan, go follow the link in the video description to check out my Patreon page. See you in the next one.